Hi guys, welcome back to Behind the Beauty. I'm so excited that I have Christina Zilber from Jouer Cosmetics on the podcast this week. And luckily, Jouer is offering a giveaway for my listeners. So make sure you check the show notes at the end of the podcast to see how you can enter and what this special giveaway prize is. All you have to do is make sure if you're on the podcast uh, actual site, you can look at the show notes or if you're on iTunes, you can easily pull that up from the actual episode. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, snap me, tweet me. Instagram comment me. I'm pretty easy to find. And don't forget to subscribe to our Behind the Beauty newsletter so we can let you guys know whenever there's a new episode. And we're going to be doing listener features in the future in 2017. So lots to come. Make sure you stay connected by subscribing to that newsletter in the show notes. Now let's get into the podcast. Hi guys, it's Serene and welcome to Behind the Beauty. Behind the Beauty is a weekly podcast series where we get together to take a peek inside the world of fashion and beauty by talking directly to the people and the brands that we love. Join me each episode as I pull back the curtain and take you behind the beauty. Hi guys, welcome back to Behind the Beauty. I am here today with Christina Zilber from Jouer Cosmetics. I'm so excited, by the way. Um, one of the most highly requested guests of the podcast. Christina is the founder and creative director of Jouer, and she's carved out some time to talk about everything you might want to know about Jouer. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. So I know that Jouer started in 2004, correct? Correct. Can you kind of tell us? Right. A, a little bit about how it began. Um, I was always makeup obsessed. Like I was the girl who read Allure magazine and, and bought literally everything that they said I needed to buy. So <laughs> my research and development drawers down there are loaded. Like I'm a makeup junkie and blogging didn't exist back then. Like it was just like go out and buy your stuff and love it and wear it and whatever. Um, around that time I had babies, little babies, they're now more grown up babies, but around that time I had babies and I was really fascinated by makeup on the go. Like the idea of being able to throw your makeup in a bag and, um, palettes were coming onto the scene, makeup palettes. Now that seems really common. Like there's so many makeup palettes, but at the time it wasn't really common, but I was so intrigued by the idea of it and also very frustrated that why couldn't I have a palette where I could pick my concealer and put it in there because concealer mm -hmm. skin tone specific, you could never just go out and buy a palette that had your concealer in there. I would buy these little Japanese um, empty palettes, you know, the ones where you can oh, smush yeah. in and I would create my own and carry that around. But then of course, if I just wanted the lipstick, it didn't really fit in my clutch. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had this, the packaging idea came first, the idea of having these connectable components that you could put together and create a palette, but if you wanted to take them apart and just use one, that, you know, that you could do. And that sort of like lived in me for like two years. Like it just lived in my head. And I would talk about like, how cool would it be to have this line where you could blah, 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 you know, just, I, yeah. and I, I honestly, I talked to everybody about it. It's like this weird thing. It just like sprouted out of me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't even really seriously think that that could be a reality, but I was talking to somebody who happened to have just, I just met her and she happened to quit, um, working for Lorac oh. and she was, I'm going independent. I'm going to be a consultant and I would love to consult with you because this sounds really unique. And she said, I hear a lot of, of ideas, but usually it's just like, I want to start a lipstick line or, but this is actually something unique and different. So she's the one who really helped me kind of get it off the ground. Wow. Yeah. Cause I remember Jouet was very much like uh, Legos for right women exactly yeah and what ended up happening and I love the idea of the packaging being connectable but I fell in love with formula so much yes. and I just felt like I used to fly to New York and do these desk side meetings this is where you go and meet beauty editors and it's a nightmare because beauty editors for the most part don't really love makeup yeah <laughs> But they're the ones telling us what to wear. They're the ones telling you what to wear. They're yeah. telling, you're praying that they're going to like what you present them and put it in the magazine. And it was just such a weird, 
I'm so much happier now that you guys are bringing mm-hmm. brands to people's awareness because of your, you, we were so reliant on somebody out in New York who literally didn't, didn't wear makeup. Like beauty editors are notoriously like bare face. Like they have gorgeous skin, but they don't touch makeup. Yeah. So how am I supposed to sit and sell this makeup when they don't really love it? You know? Yeah. Um, but okay. That was a long winded. Where was I going with that? No, it's, it's totally okay. No. Um, because obviously if anyone's oh, familiar with Jouer now, yeah. it's more than just connecting your right, own palette. Completely. Yeah. So, so it's simultaneously, I became obsessed with formula and color and you know, in that process, just, I almost don't care about the packaging. I don't care what it comes in. It's really about like how it performs on your mm-hmm. skin and what it's doing. Does it have any benefits? What's it doing for you? And ultimately, is it going to make me prettier? (laughs) (laughs) And I think that's what I, you know, I first discovered Jouer because of YouTube. I was watching YouTube. Ingrid was using your matte moisture tint. And I was like, I have to find this thing. (laughs) And I bought it, became addicted, got all of my really good friends addicted to it. And then I started following you on Instagram. And then I don't know why. I just like followed you back. Yeah. (laughs) You followed me back. And that's really how we met, right. which is crazy. But then I also started following you on Snapchat. And I oh, think yeah. that's when I really realized how amazing you are at really caring about what goes in your product. Because a lot of people either don't know, don't care to know, yeah. or just don't really care. Right. But you put so much thought into the ingredients. And if you're going to use a silicone or if you're going right. to use something, it's going to be the, of the highest quality. Right. It's not going to break you out. Right. Oh, I'm obsessed with not breaking out. Yes. <laughs> and you really test it. Yeah. So, For so long. Like, it's, yeah. it's kind of crazy. And I know my team goes crazy. But as you know, if you've been following on Snapchat, mm-hmm. I've been in development on a foundation for like <laughs> since birth, I think. <laughs> yeah. I feel like like I'm giving birth, but nine months would be too quick. Like, yeah. no, it's more than that. Um, but yeah, I take a really long time. Um, I worked on liquid lipsticks for forever. I want to say like three years. Yeah. Seriously. Before I came out with the, our formula, I just, I'm, I'm I feel that if I am not going to choose Jouer over another brand, then it's not good enough. Like, yes. so that's sort of my standard is like, okay, so if, and that's why I'm very hesitant and weary of stepping into the skincare world because, um, into straight skincare, just mm-hmm. because like, honestly, like I have to be better than everybody else <laughs> <laughs> or at least offer something unique and different. I mean, I love makeup, so I love other brands, but I really have to have something that is going to make me want to reach in my drawer and grab mine over somebody else's. And you really did do that for a couple hero products for me yeah. from Jouer because it is very competitive out there. There's so many things. But when I tell people like Jouer liquid lip creams are, or liquid lipsticks yeah. are the most comfortable thing oh. I've ever put on my lips because I can't wear liquid lipsticks two days in a row. Right. It just, I just can't. Yeah. And Jouer, I can wear every single day. I love that. Yeah. So yeah. it's one And then of, you need to add the lip enhancer on top yes. at night. And if you are, yeah, the lip enhancer on yeah. top, I do it to prep. Yes, exactly. Or like at night when you're going to sleep mm-hmm. after you've like taken all your makeup off, it's like so nourishing. I need to do that yes. again. And then also the lip toppers, I think are really unique and very unique to the market. Right. How did that come about? Um, well, that came up, it was kind of a two-step process. And the first one was um, liquid lipsticks were on the market and they were all matte. Mm-hmm. And I was, I'm a shimmer girl. I need a little, <laughs> <laughs> I need a little shimmer in my life. So I developed the first metallic, like liquid yes, lipstick. I remember. And, <laughs> right. And that was, um, that, that was kind of a really cool thing. But taking that next step is that a lot of people were using lip glosses on top of liquid lipsticks yeah, to moisturize because li- liquid lipsticks are drying. They just are a different formula. And if you want the long, 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 long wear, you're going to have to sacrifice in the moisturizing category. We did put vitamin E in our lip creams, but, mm-hmm. um, so the idea was I want most lip glosses over liquid lipstick break down the liquid lipstick yes. quickly yeah, and you, you want it to last longer. So I wanted to develop a product that you could put over liquid lipsticks that would maintain the integrity of the liquid lipstick but then also add that shimmer. So if it's, you know, if you're wearing a mat, you can bling it up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think it's so unique. It's just 
I had never seen anything like it before. Um, And obviously now I'm sure it's It's doing really well. Yeah. It's doing very well. It sells out all the time. It does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So you became more obsessed about the ingredients with your products that you were creating versus the packaging, even though the packaging came first. Yeah. Um, How is it like to be in the beauty world and you have a very specific list of ideals and ethics and yeah. also just you're never going to do anything that's not brand yeah. access like branding wise yes. like you're very specific yes um how is that like to not stray into what's popular what's trending yeah it's hard I mean you know I get presented stuff a lot of times, but ultimately, does it fit in the brand? Does, is it authentic? Like, it, it has to be really authentically something that we can embrace and that, you know, feels like jouet, which is really affordable luxury. Like, I, you know, I wish I could just do, like, a $1,000 lipstick or something, but, you know, yeah. that's not realistic. Like, and also, well, what benefits does that have? It would have to, like, have be amazing. It would need to, like, give me lip injections or something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah, it is challenging, but when you know what your mission is, it's really easy to stay on point, Mm -hmm. you know, like when something gets presented to me and I'm like, yep, we're not doing that. Like it's, it's kind of easy to not get swept into whatever's trending. Yeah. That's, I think I have so much respect is that you aren't always following the trend. You're sticking to what Jouet is. Yeah. And do you have a product development team that helps you come up with new ideas? And then how does yeah. it kind of work? I mean, it, it can work a couple of ways. Um, one is like I really originates. Most products originate from my wish list. <clears throat> you know, I was using, pardon me, it's <clears throat> a, um, I don't even know if I can talk about it, but I was using a, a foundation brush. I talk about oh, yes. sometimes on Snapchat yeah. and I'm actually changing the shape of the foundation brush, which I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know if it can match the timing with my foundation, but it's out of my own need. Like, wouldn't it be cool if it's always like, wouldn't this be so much better if it could do that and this, you yeah. know? Um, so I'm usually like digging into other makeup products and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And wouldn't it be better or, you know, more unique if it did this? Um, the other thing is I do have a product developer. I don't really have a team. I have one person. God bless her. (laughs) (laughs) We all wear many hats. Yes. But, um, so she's always visiting labs, going to trade shows, um, and just seeing what else is out there, what's new, getting presentations from, you know, different labs and, uh, a lot of the presentations are wacky, so you know she has to be really on point with what Jouet is, and we do branding meetings like once every year or so, um, mm-hmm. just to really refocus everybody on you know what is our mission and what products are we developing and and that, and then you know just brainstorm. We do that like once a year, where it's a big brainstorm of like what would be cool, what would be fun, and everybody can throw ideas out. And I even asked Snapchat. Um, yeah. Recent, I think it was like in December. Oh my God, was it December? No, it wasn't in December. It was like February or March of last year. Okay. Where I just like was like, what do you want? And people, I got like thousands of responses of people. I want this. I want that. Or I will. I'll ask. You know, are you more anti-age or blemish? And you know, getting that response, that feedback is so great because then we can say, oh, okay, blemish is a really big concern. So let's head down that road with this product. Or you know, that's awesome. Yeah, because. I feel like your products are very friendly to everybody. Yeah. To the extreme makeup lovers, to the, I just wear tinted moisturizer. Right. right. It, there's something f- that's very wearable. Exa- that's one of our key words is wearable and, um, and layerable. And, you know, you can go heavier, you can wear it, you know, kind of bolder, or you mm-hmm. can be really light and natural. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. <laughs> um, so, I know that you volunteer with UNICEF a lot. Yeah. Um, can you go? I know you recently were in, where were you? I was in Jordan. Jordan. Okay. Yeah. I visited a Syrian refugee camp, which was amazing. Wow. What an incredible experience. I mean, I, it took, 
I don't even know how long to get there. Like a day and a half. You it know? took over a day. It took over I a day. I was watching you. <laughs> <laughs> I was She's all like, like, on another plane. <laughs> I was like, how long does it take her to get there? It was a long way to go. And we were um, able to spend one day in that camp. Wow. So we squeezed in a lot in that day. But um, yeah, I've, I've been on a number of trips with UNICEF. I'm on the board here. And... Um, in the U.S., it's an advocacy group, so we're basically raising the awareness of UNICEF because UNICEF programs aren't in America. It's really for developing nations, and mm-hmm. so I've been to um, my daughter and I. I've taken my kids on a couple of them. My daughter and I were in Malaysia, uh, uh-huh. I think two years ago, and that was one week after the plane disappeared. You know that M M I yeah whatever three seventeen flight. That was pretty freaky. Wow. It was pretty scary. We're like, okay, we're going on Air Malaysia. (laughs) Oh. Um, But, you know, just every country, every one of those countries has a unique issue or unique issues, many issues. And, you know, going and discovering how UNICEF works with the country and, you know. And then I also get really inspired by visiting other cultures, you know. Yeah. I think it's important for everyone to just broaden oh, yeah. what they, you know, travel, yeah. read. Read, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's amazing that you're able to do this. I'm so lucky. How did you get involved with UNICEF? Um, when I, well, okay, so we'll go way back, and I just remember Audrey Hepburn holding okay. babies and being a an UNICEF ambassador, and she's always been my, you know, favorite kind of movie star of mm-hmm. all time. So when I was in college, I think I found Breakfast at Tiffany's and watched it every weekend, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sabrina and all those great films. And I loved her and I just thought she was so beautiful. And in her later years, she really gave back. Like that became her mission. Cut to like forget all that. Don't ever think about it. Um, in 2003, I believe, was the tsunami in Southeast Asia. Yeah. And my son was three. I think my daughter was two. And I remember turning on the radio and listening to a UNICEF field worker talk about what they were doing with all the orphaned children. I mean, you can imagine like entire families were separated and all these kids now have absolutely nobody. And who was taking care of them? Like who was there in this huge emergency? And it, and UNICEF was there and they were they were doing these little schools in a box where they bring kids around a tree these are orphan kids that yeah. have nowhere to go, and they give them a place of community. And that it's not just about like a school and learning to write; it's about building community and how important schools are. And I, anyway, I was listening to this woman, and I thought, "Oh my God, if anything happened to me, how great that an organization like that would be there for my kids." And we decided to throw a backyard carnival to raise money for UNICEF, and like. I just invited all my mommy friends Uh and we like raised like $5,000. It was a like a really fun carnival event. That's a whole other story. And and then I walked into the UNICEF offices in LA and brought them a check and they were like, wait, what? (laughs) (laughs) You didn't tell them you were going to do this. You just were like, here's a check. And from that time on, they started engaging with me and getting me involved. And I've been involved ever since. That's amazing. So it it was, you can give back oh. at any point. You totally. You just, don't need to ask. Yeah. You just do. Just do it. <laughs> and I feel like that's kind of how you were with starting Jouet, too. Totally. It's like you had this vision and you just told everybody that would listen. Totally. I believe a lot in um, vision boards. I believe in creating what you want based on, you know, your vision of it. Mm-hmm. And I think that unwittingly I, I manifested this company out of, talking about it so much and dreaming about it. I really believe in dreaming and and all of that. I think it's important to share your ideas and your vision. Yes. Because you don't know who's listening. You don't. You never know who's listening. 100%. (laughs) Or even who's like reading your comments. Yes. Like I think it's important for us Mm. to share our passions by talking about it and also uplifting others. Yeah. I think you just never know what that comment can do for someone else. Yes. You're so right. I've, I've watched some of your comments and you're very honest and, you know, just about what's going on in your life and everything. And I think like that's so, um, it is uplifting in a way it's, it's, we're all human and Mm -hmm. we are all connected. And I think that's a really great way to communicate with your, you know, I don't know, fans. Is that what you call them? I I like to call them viewers. Viewers. Yeah. I don't know. I don't like that word. That feels distant though to viewers. Yeah. Subscribers. I don't know. Cause you don't have to be subscribed to me. Yeah. I, it's weird. Yeah. I don't know what to call them because I think they're more than just fans. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, because they truly know 
me <laughs> <laughs> like everything and well and because you share also well at first I was hesitant to but when asked I'm also not the type to hide anything yeah. so when I started sharing a little bit yeah. about it and I the response was you know I'm going through the same thing or I've right. b- gone through that or just knowing that your life isn't perfect right. helps me yeah <laughs> and, you know that's exactly so I'm like okay I'm not perfect my <laughs> life is not perfect I will totally share everything and anything you want to yeah. know and even uh, dealing with whatever might be happening of with my mom or whatever, yeah. like the amount of emails I got saying that they had a parent that had a similar situation where wow. they themselves had had a stroke. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, you had a stroke and you're watching my videos. Like, <laughs> so there is yeah. the possibility of yeah. getting better. Yeah. So it's just amazing how putting yourself out there, you can get a lot back. Yeah. Like, a business, yeah. uh, your dream coming yeah. to fruition and UNICEF. Right. It's true. Um, and I think it's amazing how you share it with your kids. Yes. I think it's very important to share it with I think so too. I feel like um yeah, we ha we have to show I mean, as far as UNICEF is concerned, you know, we have to I, I there's a saying, I don't remember who said it, somebody like Muhammad Ali or something, that are are rent it's something like the giving back is the rent we pay to be on this earth yeah did you post this recently maybe uh no no i just saw that really somewhere yeah and i I was like why why do i that sounds so familiar right and no but it really sticks with me is that it's all of our obligation we've been given this gift to be on this earth and there's so many people who have a worse circumstance. No matter how bad we have it, yeah. there's always somebody who's got a worse situation. Did you watch the CNN Heroes Awards this last weekend? No. Oh my god, you'll just cry the whole time. But these people are amazing, you know, yeah. and, and we can all give back. And so, yeah, I always try to teach my kids the same, the same thing. Your kids are beautiful, by oh, the way. I'm you. always like, oh, if I was a mom, I would want to be like Christina because you have this beautiful relationship. And you're also, in my mind, like a total girl boss, <laughs> like, you know, so how do you balance everything? There is no balance. That's <laughs> the line. <laughs> there, is a balance. <laughs> there is that there absolutely is no balance. I'm just here to tell you that right now. So if you're looking for balance, <laughs> you will never get it. But once again, know your mission. Because when you know what you want in life, then you can make choices and it's really easy to cut out what doesn't work. So the two things I think that really were important to me in the last, I'm going to say 10 years. I mean, obviously since having kids, the first like three years of having kids, you're just all kids. It's all kids. You're just like in that kid world. Mm -hmm. But, um, really it's work and kids. Those are my two priorities. So everything else can kind of slip away easily because, and yes, I piss off friends and you know like I don't make it to events or whatever I just I just know what my priorities are if I you know I'm going to stay home with my kids at night and I'm going to be at the office in the morning or doing you know doing something yeah. for Jouet it's that's it's pretty easy when you know what you want and it's okay and it's okay yeah to be to lose friends along the way <laughs> um Dana Reeves said it about the rent quote oh there you go Dana Reeves I don't know who that is I don't either Oh, oh, God bless her. Awesome. Um, that's another oh. um, extraordinary woman. Yeah. Um, so I know you, like I've mentioned a couple of times now, you were one of the most highly requested when this podcast I love that. started. Yes. I think what, because Yue has grown yeah, a lot. So much. In the last few years. Yes. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with you opening up about your life as well. And yeah. I feel like people who buy from Jouet understand the the brand, not just the brand, but the people behind the brand. Because yeah. I find that I am more likely to wear makeup when I know the people making it. Yes. And That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, because I get inundated of at this point. Get so <laughs> much. I don't even understand how you deal with so much makeup. Um now it's skincare. Now I'm like, okay, I, I can only try so much. <laughs> My skin will freak out. But, and I've had to just be like, this isn't it. I won't use it. This isn't it. I won't use yeah. it. Um, but also the people behind the brand, yeah. if you 
are a good person and I like you and I like what you stand for as a human being, yeah. I'm more likely to give your brand a shot. Right. And I really think that with social media, 100%. yeah, I really think you've done an amazing job at putting Jue out there social so, social media wise yeah. um, with the, everything that's coming with influencers, right. with um, just Instagram, everything. Right. So what was that just organically? OK, happening? so I'll tell you a funny story. OK, uh, I'll tell you two stories. But no, the first one is that um, I don't remember the first time I did HSN. So I did HSN in Florida, which is Home Shopping mm -hmm. Network. And um, I can't remember exactly when it was, maybe two years ago. And I met somebody there at HSN. She is an influencer that they hire to come when they're doing like beauty nights. Can or I something. say her name? Yes. Nur? Nur. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So I meet Nur. <laughs> I wasn't sure if this was like top secret or no, anything. No, 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 no. Not okay. top secret at all. I love Nur so much. She's amazing. She's amazing. And we're, we're friends for life. Like absolutely friends for life. But what happened with Nur is that I met her in the hallway as I was coming off and she was about to go on and she was like, oh, by the way, Desi Perkins mentioned your tiara highlighter. I love it. It's so great. And I was like, who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Nowadays, you can't say who. <laughs> I was like, huh? What? Who? What? And <clears throat> we end every time I went out to Florida for HSN, I would have dinner with Nur. I would talk to Nur and Nur and I became really good friends and she introduced me to this world. She was like, okay, here's what you need to do. She's like, you need to grow in social media and you need to, um, you know, engage with these influencers. And she really made a ton of introductions for me and, and really kind of schooled me on what this world was. Cause I had no idea. And nobody really at the company is kind of crazy. Nobody here knew what that was. I would come in and I'd be like, I'm going to sound really stupid right now, <laughs> but um, I would come and say, guys, have you heard of this person called Jacqueline Hill? <laughs> <laughs> now, mind you, this is before Becca Champagne Pop. Yeah. But still. <clears throat> but still, she was a she was big huge. deal before. She was a big yeah. deal, and I did not know who she was. And this whole world opened up to me, and I just was like, all right, team. I quit PR, PR company. I quit a PR company. Like, no more. Wow. We're not doing PR anymore. This doesn't work. This is an old school model. This is what's happening right now. And let's go full in, dive deep. And I ended up hiring Mike, who's downstairs yeah. somewhere. He's amazing. He's amazing, right? And he, um, you know, I knew, like, we need somebody to manage that. We need somebody in here who's going to, like, understand that. And my nature is just very friendly and outgoing. And I yeah. think that given the opportunity to meet influencers, like, I can connect with them and share with them why why is you a and I feel like that's been a really big asset is just being able to connect with them luckily I'm here in LA and mm -hmm. you know I get to meet so many and that um that's really helped kind of build that those relationships that's amazing yeah. so you it's crazy because yeah. it wasn't like you're all an avid YouTube watcher and you're like I have to get my brand out there like totally that not. you actually totally discovered not. YouTube because of I being on HSN being on HSN <laughs> which now I'm like HSN what like that's not I don't know yeah you know, it's hard to and have you noticed as a company that by focusing on social media that you guys have grown? Definitely. I mean, I think that, so, so the other story is Snapchat. So I have oh, somebody, yeah. I don't know if you've ever met Trina Albus. Trina, she goes to Thirsty Thursdays often. So I you, know her name. Why do I know her? Oh, wait, is she with Magenta? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's a small oh world. Yeah. So Trina, I had known for years because she, I don't even remember how I met her, but Trina and I have been friends for years and she offers these classes for businesses on social media. Yeah. And I was like, I'd like to learn about Snapchat. <laughs> what is this thing called Snapchat? And so she came into the office and gave us like a how to, gave the whole office a what is Snapchat and what, you know, who, who, what are the demographics and who are the users and blah, 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 all that stuff. So I started playing around with Snapchat. And then my audience like just really weirdly started growing. Yeah. Like I well, because you're amazing on Snapchat. Like, I will check yours before. Oh, my God. I love I you. I mean, it's so cute. Because, <laughs> you know, I have my favorite accounts. Yeah, right. So I'll check yours first. I'll be like, oh, she posted. CZ posted. Oh, that's so cute. Um, it's CZ Jouet. I'll have it in the show notes. 
but because you show how your products work. Right. But you also talk about other products. Right. You're not a snob. Like, no. you'll be like, look at everything I'm trying right now. Right. You know? Yeah, I do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean... I, I honestly use mostly Jouer, like I just do. And if, I, if I'm getting ready, I kind of like, oh, I have to, I grab Jouer because I know I, it's reliable and I can use it. But I'm always testing everything else. And then we don't do brow products right now. So I'm testing brow products. And, you know, and I'm, I love sharing what works. I love, you know, sharing skincare. In fact, I keep getting requests for skin, more skincare snaps. And then every night I'm too tired and lazy to do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you're okay with sharing someone else's skincare snaps. Oh, God, yes. You know? Yeah. So I think that's what makes it so authentic yeah and oh yeah I love I love yeah. product like I'm yeah. one of you like <laughs> I know. at heart you know I actually feel like you are an influencer <laughs> yourself yeah you I, know I just want to share what I love and um yeah there's a lot uh, there's a lot of products out there I don't get the big shipments like you do I, I actually go out and buy it which is actually a whole other story because what am I choosing to buy as opposed yes. to what am I being sent you know yeah but I love I mean walking into Sephora or Ulta that's like my happy place Yes. <laughs> Total happy place for me. Right. Um, so your Snapchat just started yeah. growing like crazy. Yeah. And that, and the first time I knew that something was up with that is that I did a giveaway. Yeah. That was like my, one of my first giveaways. I did a giveaway and then I felt incredibly guilty. Well, I did two. One, okay. One of the, <laughs> this is so funny. One of the first giveaways I did, I felt so guilty that nobody, that I could only pick like two winners that I ended yeah. up giving everybody who entered. I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was watching, I must've been following you from very early on, yeah. but I just knew you had a Snapchat. So I was like, oh, I'll go follow. And every day Christina would be giving something away, <laughs> but then she would announce the three winners or the two winners. And then she's like, you guys, I feel so bad. So here, everybody, if you just use this code, you'll get this too. And I'm like, she's going to give away everything. I, feel so, I have such a hard time with giveaways. Like I, I know. hate everybody not winning. Like it just kills me. I like, actually have to just not read emails about giveaways or messages because I feel this, so I feel upset. the same way. I, I get, I want to give everybody something. I, I can't physically or like financially do it, <laughs> but I kind of hope that like by having so much content yes. that that kind of makes up for it. Yes. But no, I completely, right, I don't know if it. other people feel this way, I don't know. but I'm also, okay. So my mom's in a nursing home right now. Yeah. She likes to, like, I gave her a bag of makeup just cause I have so much doubles or extras yeah. and she, it makes her so happy oh. to walk around handing out makeup to the nurses. I get it. That's the cutest thing ever. But oh I like, I God. get it from my mom. Yes. She was the person that like at school, I remember my boyfriend in high school didn't have um, dress clothes for whatever reason. And he was like, no, I'm not going to buy dress clothes, but it was senior photos. So my mom went out and was like, no, and bought him a whole outfit and was like, he needs to wear this. Oh. And not for un anything other than like, I think at the time his mom wasn't able to do it or so yeah. My mom's always like that though. Yeah. She loves to give, give and yeah. give and give. And I think that's where I get it from. Yes. And I think that comes back to you. I really do. I think that giving, yeah. you know, comes back to you. What you give out, you get back, you know. For a good year, I think you tried to give away as you win. I know. And, and, but when, when I kind of realized, wow, we have something is that I would give these codes away. And we would get like all these users, all the yes. codes were being used. And I was like, oh, like people are actually paying attention to this. And so I still like to do that. I mean, I still like, I, you know, every week I try to do a giveaway. I yes. sometimes like fall short of it, but like I try to do something, you know, yeah, just for that. Um, and I think it's over now, but you guys just reached 300,000 oh my gosh, we did. followers on Instagram. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And you did a $300 giveaway. Yes. $300 gift card. For both platforms, right? Both. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, you should be following Jue on Instagram and CZ Jue on right. Snapchat. Yeah. But I think that's important that you are so generous with your fans of the brand. Yeah. I know. I d well, I've always just felt like, you know, what you give out in the world, you get back. And I feel like my, my, I mean, I don't even, I don't want to say fans. It's like my Snapchat fam. <laughs> yeah. Even though they're also on Instagram, but mostly on like, weird. I have like weird metrics as far as like social is concerned, but 
I feel like my Snapchat fam, I feel so connected. People here at the office are like, they like I know I don't want to let your Snapchat fam down. Like they know <laughs> I'm super protective of them and they're so supportive. Like are, don't you find they're incredibly they're amazing. supportive? Yeah. Yeah. It's rare to not have that on Snapchat. Like Snapchat is yeah. just very unique and same with the podcast listeners. So supportive. Oh my God. Yeah. That. And I think cuz it takes a little effort to download a podcast and listen to it or yeah. stream it. Yeah. Um and I think they are genuinely interested in getting to know the guest. Yeah. Because I think a lot of the times you only get the whatever the brand is putting out right. or whatever you're putting out, but yeah. there's not much to hide in a conversation. Right. So, I think it's also, why is you a successful? Because everyone knows who you are. Right. I don't know if everyone, I mean, that's interesting. I don't know if everyone does, but I know my Snapchat fam does. Yes. You know? Well, the hardcore, the hardcore. we will buy everything you launch. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> fan or of the brand. And that's been but, a really yeah. big challenge for us because here we've been plotting along all this time buying certain quantities. And now all of a sudden those quantities sell out like in one day. And that's, yeah. so now it's like, okay, so well, let's increase it a little bit and see what happens. And then they sell out. And then, so we're just trying to figure out like, wow, where does this go? Well, I think people don't understand. I think people get frustrated oh that gosh. you sell out Yes. because by the way, my favorite holiday collection best this of year, no. um, which one, the minis, yeah, the best, of the nudes. best of nudes and also the three lip, yes. cup, the full size. Um, I think think there was a lot of frustration I when know. it sold out that quickly but I think it's a great opportunity for you to explain why that happens because yeah. as a brand you have to project how much you're going to order almost so, a year in advance exactly and I don't know how much I'm going to grow and how many more people are going to be you know watching what we're doing it's so hard to figure out so you know the little vials that came in that in that best of nudes kit that those take, like you said, it's like a year, you know, that takes a really long time to put that whole kit together. And by the time we set those numbers back, I think we finalized our numbers maybe last March, February or March. Yeah. Right. It's, it's a, I don't think people realize how much time goes into product. We were probably at, Jouet was at like 60,000 Instagram followers, 50,000 when we figured that out. And now we're at 300,000. Yeah. So it's a different, it's a different game. And as a brand, it's very risky because of course you're going to project that your growth. Yeah. You're going to grow. And then you don't want to sit on inventory. That's the thing. You can't over project right. by too it's much so because if you do, and you're just sitting on inventory, that's especially a holiday kit. You can't, what are you going to do with you can't it? Get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't get rid of it. It's now you're eating a loss. Yeah. Um, so I think. I just, I hope the listeners are able to share this information because it's something that, you know, have pity for the brand <laughs> because as a business owner, as a sales yeah. situ like yeah. portion, you don't want to run out of Never. inventory. You don't want to. I know it's not a good thing. <laughs> no, that's, that's, I want everybody to have it. I want everybody to buy it. And yeah, it just, it is what it is. We're trying, we're, to, we're increasing our numbers for 2017. We have some really exciting products coming out can't wait <laughs> like what could i say <laughs> um because if you run out of inventory though people get mad yeah one and two it's all those people that have the money and want to buy it can't buy it so as a brand you've lost yeah you've lost that and then the other thing that we experienced this year was the website crash we call yeah. it the, the website crashes okay so i'm just going to tell you all right now that we are moving our website we've been in development in development for a couple of months. I think we go live the first week of January with our new site. We, knock on wood, will not be crashing anymore. So we built okay. basically a, like a jalopy. Like our, our, you know, the website was built like four years ago or something and it was, it was only able to handle so much traffic. Yeah. And then the traffic increased so much, but like we couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've had to move to the queue system and, and all of this where people get in line when a new yeah. launch happens that will change in January. Yay. Yay. <laughs> no. And that's a big deal. Cause like when I started my blog, I just used whatever generic hosting site and now I'm like, I need to move it cause it's so really? slow to load and people click off if it's too slow to load. Oh wow. 
you know, nobody yeah. wants a slow no. loading site. No. So I'm talking to my right, person. but it's stressful because you don't want to lose those eyeballs. Oh you don't want to lose those potential sales. Yes. And I think people get so frustrated and angry about I know, it. And I'm you're so sorry. And I, but I want the listeners to know it's like, nobody's more stressed out. It's so stressful. Launch days yeah. are <laughs> so stressful for us. It's, whew, it's really yeah. intense. Yeah. It, you know, you always put on a happy face. You're always like, yeah. you guys, we know we're trying to fix it. We're trying to fix it. But I just don't think people get how stressed the brand is or the company is yeah. in those situations yeah. because nobody wants, we don't want it. Yeah. No, we don't want it. And then I've read some comments were like, Oh, this is a marketing ploy. And I'm like, no, really? It's no, not. <laughs> it, it's really not. How is it a marketing ploy? I'm losing money right now. <laughs> like Losing money exactly. is never a marketing ploy. Exactly. So I know we're talking a lot about business, but I just mm. think it's important and it's a great Thank opportunity you. for you yes. to kind of share. Cause I wouldn't have known as a consumer, yeah. I would just be mad yeah. and I'm like, well, I'm not going to buy from them when anymore. I see other brands have issues like this. I just, I'm like, thank God it's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, I, th I really do believe in the power of YouTube yeah. and Instagram and yes. whatever other new social thing is out there. Cause I'm, I we feel like know. I'm behind. Um, I'm sure there's something else, but I don't think this happened in the past on launch days for makeup. I don't know. I mean, it didn't for us. It's really been a social, uh, the socials driven, driven the, um, the sales. I yeah. don't know. I can't speak to other brands. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I do remember things being sold out. Yeah. But like where websites are crashing. No, I know. The Kylie thing. I mean, oh, she crashes and burns every five minutes not anymore i think she's fixed it she's but fixed it but it's like this forever purgatory of can i check out <laughs> really <I> yes <laughs> like, so I literally, this is me i like mark out what i need to buy and at least it doesn't crash but i'm always like is this gonna, is it gonna sell out by it, the time I, it gets processed yeah, yeah because it says it literally says hang in there like you're in a waiting period until the That's checkout can happen. Yeah. And if your stuff is still available, you'll see it at checkout. And I'm just like, oh my I God. logged on at 1 PM. It started at one. Like I literally kept hitting refresh at 1259. I don't even look at what I'm buying. I just add it to my cart. I just click one of everything so I can do the giveaway and review the products. Do your listeners love those giveaways? You know, I think I have mixed yeah. because I do have a more mature audience. Mm -hmm. um, so at first they wanted to hear my opinion on everything yeah. and I did. And then they're like, you're okay. You don't need to do any more. And I was like, okay. Interesting. Um, and then I have some that are just like, yes, yes, more, more, more Kylie. But I was kind of like, it's just different colors. Um, yeah. So I do do for special launches like the holiday collection mm -hmm. or the birthday collection. Um, I personally don't wear her makeup yeah. after I review it. Yeah. It, I mean, it's I just, it. it's just it's not something. Thing. Yeah. And I do tell them that I'm yeah. like, mm, you know, you're not going to hate it, but yeah, it's more of like a fan thing. Yeah. I so, agree. um, cause for the price, I think you can get the same quality, if not better right, or more, mm -hmm. more makeup. Um, and who doesn't want more? So <laughs> <laughs> it's all about more. Yeah. Well, more, but good. Yes. More, but good. Yeah. I want good stuff. Exactly. So I think. Yeah, she's even stressed out. Like, she doesn't want this to crash. Nope, exactly. So I think it's important for people to understand that aspect of it. Yeah. Um, as Jouet, as running Jouet, um, you're still relatively small. Yeah. Like, you're considered... We are. Are We're you like an indie brand. Yeah. Or, yeah. I don't like that word, but... Cause I'm like, you're not an indie brand. It sounds like you're working out of a garage or something. I know. Right. No. But yeah, I'm like, you do very, you're very successful. Yeah. Um, but you're not owned by another. Exactly. Uh, what do you call it? Umbrella yeah. conglomerate. Um, what are some of the struggles by not being owned by a large? I mean, I don't know because I've never been owned by a large, so it's really, it's hard to compare and contrast, but I will say that what, what I really love about not being owned by this, somebody larger is that I can do whatever I want Yes, when I want and we can pivot and change and switch and we don't have a lot of red tape here. It's like, let's, let's go to my, I'm at, let's go call them up right now. Let's go, whatever, you yes. know, whatever it is, we're sort of very flexible and, um, you know, we, 
we can we can change on a dime if we feel we need to and i really appreciate that and um and we can be a little bit more adventurous in what we're doing and so i just there's things i appreciate about it i don't know i i think that i get when i go to a lab for example i get pushed i'm the little guy so yeah. i get pushed to the end of the production schedule or because my quantities are not as large as, you know, an Estee Lauder brand or, you know, a L'Oreal brand. So <clears throat> I definitely don't get priority. I get longer lead times. I don't get paid attention to as much. We, you know, I have to persist and call labs and kind of bug them a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. we're waiting for samples. We're waiting for samples. We're waiting for samples. They're like, oh, yeah, who? Okay, Jouet, okay. You know, I'm not Urban Decay or some somebody, you know, a lot bigger. So that's, that can be challenging. I Do think. you think at some point though, because you are able to order more volume, even if you're not owned by a larger company yeah. that you might be able I to? I think we're, you know, we're definitely gaining some traction in that area when we can show them, look, we, this is how much business we've done with you this year. Move us up yeah. or get that material in or whatever it is. But the numbers of some of those, I'm just going to say like Estee Lauder brands, mm -hmm. um, they're worldwide they're massive that i just can't imagine me as my brand producing that quantity maybe one day i will but you know but one day <laughs> but um so it's hard to compete some you know a lot of them even own their own labs yeah i would i'm i always feel like they do usually own their own labs. they don't Okay, they no, don't. No, for the most part, they don't. It depends. Maybe I've heard that I've heard that Maybelline Great Lash ma Mascara. I mean, they sell like one a second or something. Yeah, like so like many. Um, I have heard they do, but I don't know for a fact. But no, for the most part, a lot of the brand, the labs that I work with, also work. They there's something where they're like Estee Lauder certified because uh -huh. Estee Lauder is very stringent about their um, their regulations and so you kind of want to go to an Estee Lauder certified lab because that means that they're being held to a standard that's pretty high because mm -hmm. um, anybody can just say, yeah, I started a lab. Yeah. And it's kind of like, the, trust them? it's kind of like the wild west it is. is what I have gathered yeah. from my time. So I wrote, I'm not going to go with just anybody yeah. because ooh, I don't know what they're putting in their putting in the products or, you know, it's this office actually where we're sitting right now used to be owned. We used to only have the other side, right? on the other side there and this side was a vitamin company oh and oh you think oh isn't that nice but if you saw the way they meant they manufactured their vitamins here in this office and they would have like jugs of weird water outside and stuff oh, <laughs> i'm not kidding so <laughs> there's very little regulation in the vitamin world it's kind of that's my theory also yeah. it's like i am not gonna go somewhere to manufacture my makeup if it's if it's not a certified lab yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Um, so when you were looking for a lab when you first started as you wait, I know your friend helped you a little yeah. bit. Was she able to get you in touch with the labs? Or completely. Did you... Okay. She completely did. Um, yeah. We, it was, it was first trying to find the packaging, which she kind of figured out um, with this like upstart company that these kids who came out of um, Pasadena, like, I don't know. What's the name of that? art school um cal so, uh, Otis no cal art no i'm not sure one of them they just come out of there and wanted to start their own company and we were like their first gung-ho project which was really so perfect. your components are u.s based too well our components are manufactured in china okay so they were engineered here and then all the manufacturing of the components is in china but um so yeah, she, so yeah, she was the one who introduced me to the first lab, but now I use a lot of different labs. Yeah. Like it's not just one. Yeah. That's crazy. Like I, I think, um, I took a milk makeup talks with oh, Diana yeah. Ruth who develops all the product. Or yeah. I don't know if that's the right term, but she puts everything together essentially. And just her walking through the basic outline mm -hmm. of what it took to make a lipstick, a lipstick, <laughs> I was like, I, I never want to do this. I'll just wow. play with makeup. <laughs> right. It's a lot. It's so crazy. So did you have any idea or were you just no. like, I'm going to do, yeah. No. I, I feel like you have to just not know. Totally. You have to not know. <laughs> I think with any business that you're going to start, you have to dream about it and think about it in, in the terms of like, it's, isn't it going to be great? And then once you get involved with it, it's sort of like, oh my God. 
but like that you're already in deep yeah. so you're doing it you're figuring it out you know yeah I think I saw how it works and now I it's not something I ever want to that's so interesting because yeah. at first I was like oh makeup I love makeup I could make yeah. makeup one day no it's really hard I'm not doing it <laughs> but it's interesting because from what I'm hearing influencers all want their own brands have you been hearing that I have and I kind of I'm like, do you know what you're getting yourself into? And are you just doing private label? Yeah, I know. Exactly. Um, Because if it's just private label, I don't know about them. But for me, like if I'm going to take that time to even do private label, I want it. I'm such a control freak. Um, And I also want it to be unique. Yeah. Special. And I don't want someone else to be able to buy that at cost and slap their name on it. And my other thing is. As I learn more and more, I am an ingredients junkie. I love learning about ingredients and what it does. And even though I'm like, you know, learn about it. Some stuff's bad, but we got to use it because I like my foundation to go on smooth. Right. So there has to be silicone. Right. Exactly. I'm like, I've tried. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But there's different types of silicone. And also, what else is in it then? Right. You know, like, I'm going to try and be as good as possible. Right. Kind of like life, like I'll have the glass of wine, yes. but maybe not the whole bottle. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And I think with that private label, you don't, you lose all that control. Completely. So I don't know if everyone is as aware of ingredients. And I yeah. think as consumers, we need to start to be more aware of it yeah. because brands aren't going to change mm-hmm. until we care. I agree. And there needs to be more regulations. I agree. There needs to just be more testing i know you test your products for months and months months and months months. but you don't have to technically as a cause put it out without even without any testing really yeah and that makes me nervous yeah so (laughs) you know i get very listen i get very nervous I, i i hesitate to say you know out loud some of my worries but I remember when Emily was like five or six and we used to go to the Disney store mm-hmm. and you could, or even in Sephora, you could buy Hello Kitty makeup Yes, in the Disney store. I mean, in the, in Sephora. And then you'd go and buy princess lip gloss at the Disney store. And I'm just telling you now, like, you don't know what is inside of them. And I don't want Disney coming back and like shooting me and being really like upset. But like the fact of the matter is they're manufacturing those items really inexpensively. Yes. And there is no regulation whatsoever. And, you know, you, you don't know. Yeah. And th- we're just talking about like toy makeup. But right. No. I mean, listen, I think if it's too good of a deal to be true, if you walk in and there's a beautiful eyeshadow palette with like 40 colors and it costs, you know, 29 or 16 or 18 dollars or something i can guarantee you that's not good quality yeah it just isn't i mean it might work but kind of y- you might <laughs> well i it, depending like what your expectations right. are but it, i'm more concerned about what is in it that's going near your eyes yes and into your pores and, yeah. yeah no 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 it's not good so i think that's important to understand like yes we all want a bargain and we all want yes. affordability but we have to pay the price of right. it. And maybe as a society, if we we're willing to pay for quality over quantity. I know. It's true. You know, it's like the old French aesthetic. I mean, I used to have a French teacher. I remember in, in high school and I think she rotated her gorgeous, like beautiful clothes. But like she had like two beautiful skirts and a scarf that she would, you know, like yeah. buying really beautiful things that you rotate and wear and enjoy the same with makeup as opposed to like buying whatever the cheap thing, yeah, you know, and it's hard because like we've got forever 21 and all these great fast fashion and it's fun to pick up a bag full of clothes, but they don't last as long and mm-hmm. it's not the same. I wear the same for pairs of pants, like for a whole year I'll I'll have 20 pairs but it's the same four that gets rotated so I think there is something to it and especially with makeup you're putting it on your face I know um I know you're putting it on your face I think it's okay to spend a little bit more I'm not saying go out of your yeah crazy and I think there's a fine there's a line where there's some makeup that's so expensive oh yeah it's ridiculous you you do some of those like you I know, do it Tuesday, just be, yeah, whatever. What's Tester that? Tuesdays. Tester Tuesday, exactly. Um, I think I paid $100 for a La Prairie powder. Right. The first ingredient was talc. Oh, 
Right. I got a lot of hate for that, by the way. Why? Because they were saying, well, it's talc. It's cosmetic grade. And stop saying talc causes well, I'm cancer. I'm doing a powder and we're not putting talc in it. Yes. I know. Because you aren't going to charge people a hundred dollars or whatever you yes. you're, you don't charge people a hundred dollars, but you don't charge people for a filler ingredient. Right. And here's the thing: I don't have a huge disdain for talc. I think as a loose powder, it's very dangerous to be using when it's been caught. Yeah, yeah. we're inhaling inhale it. it. Exactly. If you need it in an eyeshadow to keep it together, right. exactly. Fine. If it's the first ingredient of a yeah. hundred dollar powder. Why am I paying you a hundred dollars? Right. Because it's cheap. Right. So I feel like there's these makeup lines that really charge a fortune and they're, you know, kind of banking on their name. You know, La yes. Perry's a great name in skincare and, you know, La Mer is like that as well. Like they're super yeah. expensive. But I, do, I think there's the law of diminishing returns that, you know, you don't actually get more by spending that much more. Yeah. Um, I think that. Like when you fall in that mid range, you're going to get good makeup. Yeah. And I, and that's actually where I do most of my shopping yeah. is I buy middle right. makeup unless I'm doing some video where I'm like, let's see if this is really that good. Cause there is a $50 lip balm I like, but <laughs> which one? Uh, the three lab healthy oh, glow. I've never tried that. Okay. So I was like $50 for a lip balm. Yeah. I thought 22 expensive. was expensive yeah. already. Cause I go through them. Yeah. But this $50 lip balm really did make my lips look Oh, really nice. Okay. okay. So interesting. Not super hydrating. Yeah. Like some of like the um, the Jouer one is very yeah, very hydrating. hydrating. But oh, you I have know, to try it. Yeah, it's it, you know you, I I, I just like trying yes, things. Me too. Yeah. Me too. And I just bought on. Um, I had like a twenty the VIB Sephora. I got yes. the email yesterday and I got a twenty five dollar off. I ended up buying a Tom Ford palette. The, oh, which a one? makeup palette. Um, the, it's the warm. The, it's it's like a new one with like eyeshadows and and the cheeks. cheeks. Okay, it's so expensive, like yeah. the most expensive palette. But I'm also gonna I consider it research. I'm like it's research <laughs> for me. <laughs> Tom Ford gets me every time. The and packaging is so yeah. beautiful. Except beautiful. the one lipstick yeah. that I always re have to repurchase because it goes bad. It's oh, the one no. shade though. It's just this one shade, and I don't know what's going on. Um, Casablanca, which is my favorite. Is it like, a nude, nude or a red? It's, it's a, nude. a nude. I don't know why it always goes bad, but I they've actually here's have the great. You checked the batch numbers on the bottom. Um, I haven't, but the great thing about them is they do keep replacing it for me. Wow. Yeah, because I'm like, hey, this smells bad. The oil's gone rancid or something. Yeah, and it, I put it on my lip, and I was like, ooh, ooh, not doing that again. Um, and I was just going to buy a new one. Yeah. But they're like, no, it's okay. We'll Where'd just give you. It? I bought it at Neiman's. So yes, That's good. Yeah. So the benefit of spending a little bit more. <laughs> is you will be able to return it yeah. if you need to. Um, but I do love their reds. Yeah. But I have been wearing Jouer Cabernet. I love all that season so far I'm so glad yeah it's one of my favorite reds um do you have any advice who do you have any advice for anybody like the reason we started this podcast yeah. is because uh Hobbs Chris grew up in a very very small town in North Carolina yeah I grew up in suburbia yeah so we weren't told that there are all these things we could do with our lives mm. Um, until much later when we figured it out for ourselves, yeah. but we already went to college and, or I already went to college and I was like, well, that was a waste. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> well, you learned other skills. I'm, learned sure. Other, I'm <laughs> sure. I don't know. Um, so <laughs> it, do you have advice for anybody listening that might not be in a major city exposed to all the opportunities that a major city yeah. has? Like if they have a dream, what to do? It's I, I've never lived outside of a big city. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in San Francisco and I live in Los Angeles now. Um, so I, I don't really, I don't really know the limitations except to say that the only limitation is in your own mind and that, that, that you know, I, my kids, you know, I even question university for them. Like, is it, is it so necessary now? I don't know if it's so important or necessary. <laughs> yeah. If you have something you want to do or you want to be involved in, you know, I, I, I look at people who work here and I'm like, the, the person who shows up early and who stays late, the person who's like willing to go that extra mile and do the extra research. So if you're interested in like the music business, 
learn everything you can and everything's available online. Learn, become yeah. a student of whatever it is you're interested in and then go offer yourself for free in your local, if that North Carolina town had a little radio station, go volunteer there. You don't even have to get paid. Just say, I'm going to come in every Friday from six to eight. And if they say, we don't have anything for you to do, just say, don't worry, I'll just sit here. <laughs> I'll do whatever you need to do. You know, just throw yourself into it. I think that is the best advice. Like become a student of it, throw yourself into it, be passionate about it. And and like you'll you'll figure your way in yeah and I love your story where you just had an idea yeah and you didn't worry about the little things you just right. did just, it I just and, kept talking about it, it took yeah. like two years of talking about it but you know you never you just never know like yeah. you said of who you're talking to but I didn't ha I don't remember googling back then you know when well I I did not have google I did not really <laughs> use the internet when I was growing yeah. up so the fact that everybody has the yeah. internet now you can Google how to make makeup if Listen, you wanted to. You, know, you absolutely can. I mean, I Google oftentimes ingredients, as I'm sure yeah. you do. Mm -hmm. I do depend on Paula's choice. You know, I do. I know you have do you have thoughts on that. But, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes you can look at an ingredient or, you know, I'll be presented actives, you know, like, oh, here's this this formula and it's got this active well I'm gonna look it up you know and yeah. I'm gonna take my time and do my research and not just believe what the lab says yeah you know and also not just go to one source like yeah. go to as many sources go to as, as many pop. sources yeah. I'll look there's some great UK sites because UK has a different kind of aesthetic and mm -hmm. health aesthetic and everything so we get want to hear their opinion about whatever it is I'm looking up but yeah so yeah. there's such an advantage having Google I think it's just like the limit is in your own mind um, as far as, you know, what you want to dream and what you want to learn and, and do. And just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. In whatever way. I get a lot of Snap questions about starting. Like, can you tell me how to start a brand? I'm like, oh, that's bigger than a little Snapchat. Yes. <laughs> I can't quite answer that question right now. But um, I would say if anybody's really interested is like pick one product. You know, don't try to start a whole line because the line is super complicated. But like pick one product and, you know, make that really unique and special and yours like uniquely yours what is it that you want to make out of it and then you know just make a couple of hundred of them batch it up and sell them at like school fairs or whatever like mm -hmm. get out there and start talking about it and now you can build a website for free yeah you know like Wix or whatever you can build a website and there's so much you can do I think without a lot of startup to start building a brand mm -hmm. you know Cool. Um, so we're okay. Uh, <laughs> so we're coming to the end of the interview. You've been amazing. I have a lot of listeners that are also content creators, but also just wanting to learn more yeah. about beauty, about following your passions. So what are we touch upon like how to get started and follow your passions but what is something that like because we can't all have a good day so yeah. what is something that helps you get through like a really stressful day a really bad day yes, a really stressful day throws me into bed like <laughs> I'm not gonna lie some people everybody reacts differently yeah you know um I if it's super stressful I curl up I need to like I need a big fuzzy blanket and socks and I need to like I need to just cocoon myself. Like that's how I deal with stress. It's, it's kind of bad. I don't scream or yell or whatever. I just like, I go home and I like, I go in introvert. But I think that I, I'm always trying to stay positive. Like, yeah. I mean, that is just my thing is that there is always, I mean, not always, there's a lot of moments in life where there's a really hard to find the positive, but I'm, I, I'm so conscious of what I do have and what I can be grateful for so hyper conscious of it that it's very hard to like to break into that barrier you know like mm -hmm. that is that's a that's a fortitude that's like a wall protecting me of like I mean I can go as as far as like my socks are really comfortable right now like I can <laughs> I can look at the little things and be like I'm so lucky I have like a the softest blanket on my body right now and like really like okay so I'm healthy like I actually feel really healthy right now I may be stressed but like I feel okay and that's that's good like just find whatever it is I can hear birds chirping and be like 
that happened to me today and I was just like, I love the sound of birds chirping. Like whatever it is, like bring yourself back to the positive. Like just try to stay positive. I know that sounds really like callous if you're going through something really hard, but there's always something to be grateful for. Yeah. Well, no, because yeah. you have to be otherwise. For me, I have, Sink. yeah, I have like uh, yes. depression tendencies and major anxiety tendencies. Yeah. So if I let myself go down that spiral, like some people would be like, just give yourself the day. I'm like, it won't be just the day for me. It will turn into wow. yeah. weeks. Yeah. And so how do you deal with it? I probably not. I obsess over other things that are not yeah. what's going on. Yes. That's, it's not necessarily healthy either. Like how I clean my, my drawers out. I'm like, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Like I'll yeah. organize. I'll sit down and just organize. Organizing. Yeah. Um, I'll work. I yeah. work, 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 work. Right. And it's kind of a vicious cycle because I have to have something to obsess about. So right. if it's not going to be this negative thing in my life or worrying but about. But that's good that you know that about yourself. Like redirect. Yeah. That obs- like if, that, if that's going to happen no matter what, like choose something productive. Yeah. I mean, it used to be obsessing over not eating anything processed and, or, you know, and (laughs) exercising three times a day, um, because being coming from the acting background, like you can't control anything else. So so yeah. So I would just so much happier now. I'm so much happier. I'm also 10 pounds heavier, (laughs) but it's it's totally okay. Cause I'm actually happier. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just, I think also understanding who I am and like, if I let myself get too deep into this dark place, it's going to take a lot to pull me out of it. And I honestly, I have to say my viewers, the community watching and listening, they keep me going because I can't just disappear for a week. Right. I'll have to answer questions of where I've been. I'll have to answer for (laughs) Yeah. So every once in a while I have that like fear, like it's been like a day and a half and I haven't snapped. I'm like, Oh my God. Like, then I start getting the snaps like, are you okay? Is everything okay? Yeah. What's going on? You know, you're like, oh, you know, I, I do have to say like, hey, I'm taking an hour or yeah. I'm taking the day away from snap. But I think having the community hold me accountable, it keeps me a little I like bit. like that. That's it, good. It's yeah. like b- bolstering you. I mean. Yeah. I really do say YouTube saved my life. Wow. Because without YouTube, I don't know what would have happened to me emotionally, mentally. Yeah. Um, because it does give me that accountability and I'm like, well, that this community is here and I can tell them I'm having a bad day and, and they're yeah. not going to judge me for it. Exactly. Um, they do tell me to take time off. <laughs> they're like, take a break. They're like, it's okay, sir. <laughs> we don't need you every day. And I was like, no, but if I don't work. Um, so I think it's something I'm, te- I'm trying to teach my kids. It's really hard because, you know, for them, school now is at a whole new stressful level. Oh my it's gosh. crazy to, you know, their school in particular is very difficult and you know, just, there's so much pressure on them. And I'm always just like, find your happiness. Like, I don't care. I don't care if you go to university. I don't care whatever. Like just, it's about finding your happiness and any little thing during the day that you can latch onto that gives you happiness. Like hold on to that because it's super important. It's really meaningful. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. You have to have something you love Yeah, and it has to still make you happy. It could be like, you know, marshmallows. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, cool. Is there, uh, is there anything you'd like to tell the listeners before we leave? Um, is there anything you can, I mean, I appreciate every one of you who listened. I'm so, um, honored that I was requested. Yes. You even got a personal snap or email. Somebody snapped me. Yeah. Yeah. And because she snapped me back and said, I emailed or I snapped (laughs) Christina. She said she'd do it. And I was like, okay, I was going to wait till my equipment was a little bit better before asking her, but okay. This looks very high tech to me. Well, we upgraded. We were, we were able to upgrade. Uh, I think this is going to be episode. What episode are we? 11. Nice. So we were able to upgrade within 11 episodes. That's great. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. That's exciting. Yeah. I feel um, like this should be like um, a, this, maybe like a YouTube show. We are working on that. That would be like a talk show. We it's are, a great idea. We're working on putting the actual podcast interviews yeah. on YouTube. We were using my filming equipment, which does not work oh. because it shuts off every 15 minutes. <laughs> So we are hoping to be able to upgrade a 
to a, adding a camera specifically for will a podcast. You bring me back? I will, if you will be back, <laughs> if you'll be back, I would, love I would love to have you back. No, I think it's a really fun idea mm -hmm, because a lot of people, we did put two episodes up online, horrible quality because it shuts off every 15 minutes. Um, but yes, editing costs a lot because he can't edit. He doesn't edit a video. I don't have time to add in another video to edit. So we were outsourcing it. Yeah. Um, but we do definitely want to like have a studio oh, or at I, least this is a great idea. Yeah. Or at least like your Can't office Ipsy is beautiful. Um, I don't know. I can ask them. We'll talk to them because Corey was a guest. Did you pitch this with them? I will. I, yeah, no, because we really do want to put this online think because about how many people pass through there. Yeah, because listeners were actually watching the first two episodes that we put up, even with horrible quality, and they're like, "We liked watching it because after listening it, we wanted to meet the person right. visually." Right. So, and I do have a blind listener, yeah, who listens to the podcast and also will watch my YouTube videos oh, I love that. or listen to yeah. my YouTube videos. But it's it's been a really amazing kind of a like yeah weird it's a fun niche I think yeah it's a cool niche that you're doing yeah and I think it's good for people to get to know the brand right and also feel inspired and learn from people who actually are in it right because I think a lot of us are only exposed to what we are given at, at universities or yeah. high schools and back then it was very it's a different world it's a very different world and there it's all mm. theory yeah it's not reality yeah so I think it's important that if you're in school and you might be feeling down or feeling like, yeah, I'm not ready for the real world. It's okay. Yeah. You're ready. Yeah. You're in it. You'll you're just figure it out. Real world. You'll just figure it out. Yeah. yeah. I hate that word. Like you're, when you're gone to the real world. I know. What does is, that mean? Yeah. I'm like, what? what? University is just a strange like microcosm, but it's not, I don't think of it. It's like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm confused about what the what the value of it, it of having that I get a really education. expensive piece of paper at the yeah. end it went, and what did it really bring you you know you're independent though you're not working for a company no I'm not working for a company and if you wanted to go and be very specific like doctor lawyer right. um, finance right you definitely do need that degree but if you wanted to do something on your own yeah. or if you just I don't know because would you hire a non-college graduate I would See, I would because because if they're showing up and they're, you know, bringing great ideas to the table and they're working hard, then I don't care. Yeah. So I actually have found in my experience, college graduates have a false sense of entitlement, entitlement yeah. and um, what it should be like. Like, I don't work after six. And I'm like, that's oh, no, not no, that. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Even my brother, who's always been in a corporate world, he yeah. works after six. Right. He works whenever he has to work. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's very much a disservice yeah. if you yeah. come from that world. But yeah, I, I love that you aren't forcing your kids to go to university if they don't want to. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't like my daughter really just she's like, I don't care. I don't care if I go yeah. to the University of Alaska or wherever. It doesn't matter to me. She's like, I just want to be happy. Yeah. And I think my son is definitely more driven. He's very academic. He's super academic. <laughs> so he's more driven. Like, I think it's the right path for him. Yeah. So we'll see. But I don't know. I'm not attached to any one university or yeah. maybe go to Europe. You know, there's a big bad world out there. Yeah. Also, you can always go back. You can always go back. School is something that you can always go back to. True. Life is not. Oh, that's so true. That's a good point. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for having me. I know you're super busy. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I mean, I'm so happy. No, no. <laughs> Being my guest. You sorry. Me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I only had one cup of coffee today. <laughs> I brought mine. So um, I loved it. And thank you for everything. Yeah. And we will see you guys next week. But if you guys want Christina back on when we can film it as well, then please leave a comment in the show notes or in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe rate us on itunes and we will see you guys where i'll you can hear us next week that was so awkward <laughs> okay bye bye, bye.